AFA Today, live from New York. Kevin McCullough, glad you're with us on AFR Talk every single day at this time. Tempting to do something real simple. Uh, obliterate some confusion. Amplify truth. Pursue clarity. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever conquer all three. Uh, but it is uh, certainly worthwhile life aims to have uh, to pursue those things every day. Uh, Kevin McCullough is my name. My phone number, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. The story from the Royal Sci- uh, College of Psychiatry today saying no one is born gay. Uh, that's the most definitive statement a major psychiatry or psychology institution has issued uh, in that regard, maybe ever. Um, and then there's this other story out of Utah that I find kind of interesting. A school uh, decided to Photoshop girls that they felt like showed too much skin, mostly girls. I, maybe there were some guys that they Photoshopped too, uh, but th- I think the majority of them were were girls in the uh, in, in the yearbook. And your thoughts on the appropriateness of that? Uh, let's let's talk to you now. I don't know what you want to talk about because my call screener didn't put your uh, subject line in the. Uh, on the on the call screen, so we're just gonna we're gonna we're hope we're hoping that we're gonna be on on target here. Let's talk to Clayton in Texas. Hi, Clayton. Welcome. You're up with Kevin McCullough. Hi. Hi, Kevin. This is Clayton. Uh, thank you for giving me some time. Uh, I'm old enough that I remember back whenever uh, the whole homosexual uh, bill started with uh, it's basically giving a, a disease. Uh, uh, social, Hello, Clayton. Uh, acceptability. Okay. And uh, that's, I think, a lot of what's fueling our uh, national debate over uh, health care is basically it has a clause, or the clause uh, where there's no uh, pre uh, existing. Uh, qualifiers, and that's a very expensive disease to uh, cover, and now that they've got that pre-existing, we're, we're going to be covering more people that have a, a, a lifestyle that has caused them to... Uh, that have a disease, what? To have a disease. You, you used a word there. We're going to be paying for what? We'll be paying for the treatment uh, of what disease? Expensive treatment. Of what disease? Of AIDS. Okay, I'm pretty sure insurance plans already cover that. Uh, so I'm not sure that that's going to be something new in the uh, in in the plans. I mean, the cocktails for AIDS, and it's my understanding that the price on those have come down considerably. Um, in fact, it's one of the ways we're able to get uh, help to Africa, as we have done a lot of uh, in some places where AIDS is pandemic uh, rather inexpensively. But uh, how did how did that relate to what you were trying to express? I'm trying to follow your train of thought, Clayton. Help me out. Well, you you, you kept bringing things up, and I had uh, thoughts on each of them. And, uh, it's basically the the uh, going with the medical group there in England that. Uh, came out with that is uh, we're born as uh, male and female and we're uh, we reinforce that or hopefully our parents reinforce uh, that biblically sanctioned uh, relationship and but it, at that time it's with uh children of our own age, and there are people that would say, I mean, using their, uh, the gay, lesbian, or GLBT, uh, thought of reasoning, if you're born that way, and then you have positive reinforcement throughout your life, uh, that would make pedophilia acceptable because... They can't help it. Uh, yeah, I think any sexual sin that people engage in uh, is always a choice. I, I, Clayton, I'm sorry. I'm still not quite following what you were doing, but i got got a lot of people that want to get on, so I've got to keep moving. Uh, Paul in Texas, thanks for your call. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Hi. Hello. Paul, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm here. 
Welcome. Uh, I, I heard your uh, comments about the Royal College of Psychology, Psychiatry yes. in, in Great Britain, and uh, I hate to say it, but they're wrong. I mean, I'm a, I'm a heterosexual Christian. Uh, there was a study done by the Dutch back in uh, the 1980s, and not only have, did they prove that homosexuality exists before birth, they have a test for it. Unfortunately, the gay community totally freaked out and suppressed this study, thinking it would make everybody think they were freaks. Um, they even know the cause. It's caused by uh, stress, severe stress, when the uh, mother is carrying a child. Uh, the increase in homosexuality in cities uh, where there were bombing during World War II and in Holland where there was famine uh, increased the, the population. The, the mother, when she's pregnant in extreme stress, she has an enzyme which alters the reproductive concepts of the baby. So the uh, Yeah, Paul, the I've, I've done a lot of study on this. I've never seen that study from Holland, so feel free to email it to me. Uh, but there has never been a cause established in a major medical study that I've, that I've seen, and so feel free to send it to me, kmcradio at gmail.com. Uh, I've never seen a study that has uh, defined... Uh, the the cause from a uh, genetic, biological, uh, DNA, or an otherwise inborn cause uh, that is that is originating the homosexual behavior, and I, I can disprove what you were saying. That study said easily from several people that I know that uh, have chosen to live the homosexual lifestyle, whose mothers were not particularly stressed uh, during their pregnancy. Um, so I don't I don't know that that I don't know that that and if that study dates from the 1980s this this is this is a current brand new study by the Royal College of Psychiatry and uh, psychiatrists are MDs so they know they know um, uh, medicine uh, uh, you know general practice uh, as well as the uh, study of the mind so it's it's a it's a I don't know. You just send me whatever you got. I'll be glad to take a look at it. Uh, John in Texas, you're up next. Kevin McCullough, glad to have you. Hey, Kevin, John. Appreciate you, uh, your show, man. I wanted to um, talk about um, the the gay uh, definition you of know, you know, being born that way. Um, I recently uh, read uh, our city's, uh, our close city, Houston, had a ordinance that was unfortunately passed yesterday that um, characterized uh, being gay as an innate characteristic. Right. And um, I actually went uh, up to uh, one of the hearings prior to the vote and read that um, description out to the council and to the mayor and asked them um, why they put lies in their uh, in their ordinance, you know, because that's not an innate characteristic. And um you know, I, I just I feel that we have been hijacked, is like what you said, by taking, you know, words that mean one thing and using them in a sense that's, you know, unfactual or not true, and then it makes it look like it is an innate characteristic, characteristics, but it's not. I found your, uh, you know, I haven't read the article or the, uh, the study by the Royal College that you were speaking of, but... Um, certainly when I get back in the office, I'm going to read that today and, and understand that better because that's a, that's a conversation that I have with many uh, parents that have uh, kids that are gay and, and they claim that, you know, they were born that way, and I, and I repeatedly tell them it's, it's a choice. And, um, you know, to have some studies that back that up, I think, are important. And, uh, and John, let me, give you, let me give you a little hint on that as well, uh, because I have those same conversations. Uh, I, th- I think that when we stop and say, no, it's a choice, I think we're not doing a good job of communicating either. I think we need to be very precise. Be- and here's, here's, here's why I'm saying that and, and making this point to say this. Um, if you say, if a parent says to you, my child says he was born that way, and I love my child, so I have no, I have no reason to doubt him. 
uh, and we just say, no, it's a choice, and he's going to burn in hell. That, that's not going to go anywhere. Now, I'm not saying that's what you're doing, but there, I, there are people that I think have probably done that. If we respond by saying, I know that he may believe that, he may feel that way, he may, he may not remember a time when he hasn't felt those feelings. But from a scientific standpoint, there is nothing that uh, any major research studies can prove is uh, a genetic, biological, or otherwise um, a predetermined cause or, or, an, or, or uh, origin for the homosexual behavior. Now, there, there may be the – other, the other set of studies that are important to understand in all this is that there's a ton of studies – that have talked about how fluid sexual feelings are. Uh, there was a major study that was done. I, I reported on its results probably two years ago at this point, and it was and it had been being compiled following women for the previous fifteen years. Basically, followed them from late high school into their early thirties, uh, late twenties, and they found in just studying those uh, that sample of women, and it was a pretty large sample. I want to say it was over a thousand women that they studied. Uh, what they what they discovered is is when girls were in high school and in college and they were influenced by feminist uh, professors and other things that there was a lot of sexuality that they were very fluid with and they they could have their heart stirred and emotion stirred one way or another very easily. What was what was ironic and very uh, outstanding it stood out from the rest of the study was that once they got out of those kind of influential years and began lives as young adults, that their heart's desires kind of hardened into uh, a very similar, predictable path of life, meaning they wanted a family, they wanted to have children, most of them wanted husbands. Uh, there was this, uh, even if they had engaged in, in otherwise uh, illicit or homosexual uh, activity in college, there was this kind of overwhelming, and I, I want to say it was in the upper 90s percent, of all of the women that they studied that turned out desiring the traditional uh, family and uh, most of them deciding to move in that direction, even if they had previously been homosexually engaged. So when we're talking about this and just saying, well, it's a choice, it is a choice. Uh, Every behavior that we engage in is always a choice. Every man who's addicted to pornography, made a choice to addict himself to pornography every time he ordered a movie that he knew that he shouldn't, every time he went to a bookstore he knew that he shouldn't, every time he looked at a magazine that he knew he shouldn't, he was reinforcing what he would probably even on some level describe a desire that he had had since birth. But that doesn't make it right. So the behavior being focused and and us being able to delineate between feelings that a person may have about something those can be very fluid. Those can change dramatically over the course of someone's time. And maybe you were abused as a child. And if so, you probably were reprogrammed on a certain level in terms of what your feelings feel. Feelings can be very fluid. They're very untrustworthy. That's why no one should ever get married to somebody because they feel something for them. Uh, you, you should never marry someone simply because of what you feel. You should, you should marry someone based on what you know. And the knowledge of who they are and the knowledge of who you are should be a much bigger uh, uh, springboard to a successful life down the road. And if you have good feelings towards them, that's not a bad thing. But the, the, the point being, feelings are fickle. They're fluid. They're all over the place. Hormones change. The weather changes. Uh, you, you get a cold one day, you don't have it the next day. You may feel something completely different. That's not trustworthy, and it is not predetermined. What is, what is always known is that every sexual act someone engages in, whether it's as simple as holding someone's hand from a standpoint of affection, a kiss, or even much more intimate than that, every one of those actions requires making a choice in advance. So the choices are surrounding the behaviors, not necessarily what they feel or think. And I think if we, if we say, look, you may, those fe- you may not know where those feelings come from. You may actually be somewhat uh, confused about why you ha- have those feelings at all, and that may be something that we should explore. We- maybe we need to talk about uh, emotional health and-, and-, and talk to some people that have uh, had these same experiences and-, and figure out if there's a way that that can be reprogrammed in a different way. That's what all these former uh, ministries are about. But at the end of the day, even if you have those inclinations, even if you have those feelings, that doesn't define you. Uh, uh, you are much more than just what you feel sexually 
uh, stimulate you. You are much more than that as a human being. You have a mind. You have a soul. You have uh, the ability to focus and decide and to pick and to choose. And really to deny that limits you as a human being. It makes you say, I am less than what God fully made me to say that I'm anything other than that. All right, let me see if I can get another call in here before we go. Stephen is in Tennessee. Hi, Stephen. Welcome. You're on with Kevin McCullough. Hey, Kevin. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, sure. I'm glad you were able to take my call. Um, I want to talk about the uh, gay issue. I've listened to the uh, previous callers, and uh, um, I have to say that uh, I am attracted to both men and women. Um, I'll throw another wrench in there. Um, I'm, I'm attracted to both men and women. Um, uh, since the fourth grade, I remember being attracted to men. Uh, okay, Stephen, that's all. That's all feelings. Okay. Uh, what do you well, know to be true? What do you know to be true about your choices for behavior? Okay, the choices of behavior. You are absolutely correct. The it is a choice to uh, decide whether you're going to do that or not. Yep. And it, I've started reading the Bible more um, and come to know Jesus a little more um, in the past few months, and I think if uh, the majority of these um, homosexuals, uh, including myself, if they were raised in an environment where they were constantly reading the that's, Bible... That's, exactly what the, that's exactly what the, uh, the studies show, uh, Stephen, and thank you for that uh, confirmation. Kevin McCullough, glad to be with you each weekday. Join us tomorrow, same time. The Silver Fox, Brian Fisher, and Focal Point are next.